Computers are in nearly every household across the world, yet so few people really understand how they work. Now this is no fault to the user, of course. In this world, there are so many scary sounding computer tech bumbo jumbo names that it, one can understand how it might be a little daunting to get into computers. But in reality, you can learn the basics of computers in just about 10 minutes. Pretty convenient, right? So that's what we'll be discussing today and hopefully a way that simplifies this down to where even your 80 year old grandma can understand the basics of computers. So without further ado, let's get this started. So really to start understanding computers, there's only around six major components you need to understand. After all, a computer is really just a large Lego set, but instead of working with tiny little bricks, you're working with hundreds of dollars worth of equipment, which now that I say that is kind of a lot like Legos are nowadays. Anyways, so I'm going to be going through these in order of what I think you would install first in a computer, not necessarily in uh, order of importance or anything like that. So first off, let's start with the case. Now, as you might expect, the case really just holds everything in the computer. That's really all it really does is just hold all the components of the computer, whether it be screwed down into some slot, something in that manner. There are some slight variations between cases. Obviously, looks is the main one. And then there's differences like size. Some are big, some are small. And then if you're an advanced user, you may want to look into heat flow. But otherwise, cases just hold everything in the computer. Next up is the motherboard. The best analogy I can really give the motherboard is the nervous system excluding the brain. And you'll see why in a little bit. So really what the motherboard does is everything will be wired up to it. And the motherboard will make sure everything is working in a synchronized manner. So for example, the processor will send some instructions through it, go down into the motherboard, and then to like the graphics card. The motherboard makes this possible because that's where the information travels through. Piggybacking off of that is the CPU, or central processing unit, or processor for short. So like I said before, how the motherboard's the nervous system, excluding the brain, well the CPU is the brain itself. So really what it's going to do is come up with instructions and it's going to send that to another part of the computer. So think about it like this. If your brain wants you to raise your arm, it's going to send a signal through the brain, through the nervous system, into your arm, and that's how you know you should lift it. Well, it works the same way in a computer. Let's say you want to display something on the screen, then the CPU is going to send some instruction from it through the motherboard and to the graphics card for it to be displayed. It works the same exact way. So that makes this a very important part of the computer. So if your computer is running slow, maybe upgrading the CPU would be a good place to start because that means it can process instructions quicker, it can send them quicker, and overall things are just gonna be a lot nicer on your computer. A large part of the CPU's workflow is the RAM. Now by definition, RAM is just temporary storage. Now you may be wondering why a computer would need temporary storage, but think about it like this. Let's say you need to go to the grocery store to buy some milk. He needs some milk! And just that one item is just the milk. So you're not going to write down milk on a piece of paper and walk around the store constantly looking down at this piece of paper so that you remember what to buy. You're going to store it in your short term memory, you're going to walk in the store and get some milk. Now computers are going to work the same exact way. There are many things on a computer that just need to be stored for a little bit just in case they're used again. You don't want to reprocess things over and over and over again that don't need to be reprocessed. Now this temporary storage is going to be saved onto the RAM sticks. And you can see how much storage there is for that temporary storage. Uh, whether it be like 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, you can see how much you can store on there. Now that means that if your computer is running slow, upgrading RAM can often help because it can store more things temporarily. Therefore, it doesn't have to constantly be reprocessing things that don't need to be reprocessed. Now moving on to another very important part of the computer is the graphics card. Now the CPU or processor does not actually 
display things onto your monitor. It doesn't have that capability. All it does is come up with instructions for your computer. So that's where the graphics card comes in. The CPU will send those instructions to the graphics card that will then display things onto your monitor. So in many ways, the graphics card would be like the eyes of the computer. Just like your brain cannot actually see things itself, it has to work in conjunction with your eyes, which is the graphics card in this example. So that means to see anything at all on your monitor, it's going to come from the graphics card. So usually this will not improve the speed of your computer a little bit, but if you're doing things that are heavily graphic intensive, then upgrading your graphics card would be a really good idea. That includes things like games because of the graphics on them, video processing, photo editing, all those things have a lot of graphics in them and becomes very intensive on the graphics card in particular. So upgrading the graphics card would not be a bad idea in that situation. Now the last thing we're going to be talking about is the storage on the computer. Not the temporary storage, which was RAM, but the permanent storage on your computer. Now, as one may just expect, it's going to hold everything on your computer. Everything that's permanently on your computer is going to be in the storage, and storage usually comes in the form of a hard drive or solid state drive. So that means your programs, your games, all of that will be stored on this permanent storage. Think about it like your long-term memory. You don't want to have to relearn addition every single time you want to add something. You're going to store that in your long-term memory. It works the exact same way on a computer. You don't want to have to re-download things constantly just to use them. It's going to be stored on your hard drive or solid state drive. So there you go, guys. That was the six major components of computers. That's really all you need to understand as far as upgrading. Usually when buying computers, those are the main things you're going to be buying. So yeah, hopefully I explained this in a way that was simple enough for your 80 year old grandma. I don't know, you can send it to her and try. If you'd still like to learn a little bit more, I have videos about most of these major components already. You can go and watch those. They're around 10 minutes long and I think they're pretty informative. If you want to read up some more, I'll provide some links down in the description to some good pages that will offer more information about these topics. But yeah, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down. There are no hard feelings. Just please leave a comment down in the comments section and tell me I can improve in my next video. So, I will see you guys in the next one.